Hi everybody, I'm JT and welcome to another video from me here at Camper Van Journey and today I'm joined by my special co-presenter, Harry. <laughs> so in today's video I wanted to have a little chat about our top five favourite campsites. Uh, looks like uh, lockdown is going to be ending very shortly for all of us and certainly in the UK it looks like we've got plans for um, us to be able to get out and enjoy and explore campsites and our greater surroundings hopefully from uh, May June time onwards so it's certainly looking like we're going to be able to start to get away and enjoy our camper vans to their best. So what I wanted to do in today's video with Harry's help yeah. is we've put together our top five favourite campsites that we have visited over the last four or five years, uh, four or five years that we've been lucky enough to own a Volkswagen camper van. Oh, remember, if you enjoy my videos, please remember to click the button to like, like and, and subscribe. subscribe. It's really important to, to us and it really helps us grow the channel um, and do more videos for you. Uh, about. So let's get into the list. So we've been lucky enough uh, with our vans to travel an awful lot around um, France and Europe over the last uh, few years and as I've said in previous videos and especially the one about why we chose our Volkswagen um, camper van, why we bought one in the first place and there's a link to that video here if you want to click and watch that. Um, owning a van has enabled us to travel and I think see some amazing places that yeah. we certainly wouldn't have had a chance to see before or had the inclination to go and see before but going about with the van if you're enjoying these places and having an adventure you've got to stay somewhere and we always try and move around when we stay four or five different campsites in one trip so in this video we wanted to get together out of the I think how many have we stayed in altogether probably 12 or 15 different sites we made a big list of them in our book here and it was a lot longer then we realised when we started writing them down we remembered lots of different places that we've been, many sites we've been to more than once. Yeah. And there's a bit of a common theme when we're um, staying at places. We've become real fans of Hootopia. Um, Hootopia campsites have been brilliant for us and I'll go through and explain uh, the reasons why we think they're so good in in another video yeah. but most of the ones that in fact I think all of the ones that we've chosen are Hootopia sites yeah. so they come highly recommended from us here at Camper Van Journey and I'm going to list now our five favourite sites so shall we start with number five Harry yeah okay so number five Borg St Maurice no it's not Borg St Maurice Oh. You've given it away now, that's number one. Oh. Never mind, let's start with number five. So number five. So number five is a place called Vaud Villa. Um, Vaud Villa is a campsite in the Alsace region of France, so right in the north, get me get my geography right, northeastern corner of France beautiful part of the world and very close to the German border. Yeah. Um, it's a part of France that over the years has been switched between being German and French and um, up until very recently but really really beautiful countryside and it is um, the site itself is in a mountain side pitch yeah. so halfway up a mountain yeah and from the pitch itself you could see across the plateau, uh, the, the river plateau that runs across to Germany, um, Switzerland Germany, and Germany. the French Alps as well. So you've got an amazing view, it's a really really nice place. Now we've only been to this site once and it really I think shows yeah. testament that it's made it into our top five, which yeah. I think is fantastic. So let me tell you, or let us tell you, yeah why we really like it so number one is the area yeah it was a beautiful area lovely yeah. location and from where we were in Rottweiler you were very close to some of the very famous um, Alsace region 
villages were famous for the sort of chocolate box, multicoloured yeah. buildings. So we had um, Kaisersberg, Ingersheim or Eaglesheim, lots of um, chateaus famous for there's a wine route that you can drive through. Um, Strasbourg isn't too far away. And whilst we were there, we drove across into Germany as well and had a little yeah. drive around and explored um, the German countryside as well, which is just over, just literally drive over the River Rhine, and we were there in Germany. So yeah. we were there for four or five four, days? Five days. Five days, yeah. four nights, five days, I think yeah. it was. And it was beautiful, lovely site, really nice pool. Um, I think it was two outdoor pools. There was a yeah. big really big one big up uh, yeah long. long rectangular one for great for swimming and then yeah. there was a, a smaller um sort of kids pool which was really nice and yeah. pictures here that you can see and enjoy but the the facilities were amazing the location was fabulous um easy access to um lots of local providers of all the alsace regions famous for uh, the local produce so yeah. Um, famous for the wine, famous for the pastries. It was a really, really nice place. Um, it's very easy to get carried away and say how great these places are, but yeah. what we want to do with this, our top five, is also give a, the bad a bad bit as well, if we can think yeah. of one. And there was one bad bit, wasn't there? Was that yeah. the the pit, the campsites on the, really on the side of a halfway up a mountain? Yeah. And so it was really steep and everything to yes, go everywhere. Yeah, so some of the bits were steep. The campsite itself, whilst the pitches were level, the um, site itself was fairly steep. So if you if you were start at the top of the site where you entered and you wanted to wander down to one of the toilet blocks, it was quite a steep walk down. Which is Especially as my job was to fill up all the Oh yeah, as your, water yeah if Harry was in charge of filling up the water bottles, so that was... It was a it's bit really of a heavy. Heavy carrying it all back up back up the hill. Yeah. But the um, other thing was the again mountainside pitches, the ground tends to be pretty hard. Yeah. So we were okay because we had some heavy duty metal pegs that we use when we you may well have seen in our videos that we are set up is we take our, our van, um, one or two of the boys will sleep upstairs in the upstairs sleeping and then we pitch a tent alongside um, so when we're using our, our, our tent, obviously we've set all that up and again there's a, a link here to our setup if you're interested in, in, in that, but the um, the floor itself was, was pretty hard so we needed some heavy duty pegs and that's I guess really one of the, the only downsides. But, yeah, really um, hard. Yeah, but it was a lovely space and uh, interesting fact from Vot Villa when we packed our tent up took it all down folding it up and what did we find underneath our tent underneath our ground sheet a toad a toad yeah, there was a really big toad who'd been hopping or just appeared from under our ground sheet I, I guess he'd been there certainly at least one night maybe longer but he just hopped out as we folded the tent up so quite weird but pretty cool as well here's a picture <laughs> so yeah here's a picture here so that was number five so moving on to the next one, which is number four. 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 <laughs> okay. So number four, again, another big them up. We're not getting paid by Utopia. We just really like their sites. Um, so the next one is Lac du Relay. Yeah. Now Lac du Relay is a, as you might have guessed, with the, the name, it's uh, next to a, a lake. lake. Uh, near a village town called Relay um, in the Loire region of France and beautiful beautiful part of France and a great place to use as Loire is famous the Loire Valley is famous and yeah. us Brits love going there because it's pretty easy for us to access mm. and there's a huge amount to see uh, and do um, over in sort of central north western France I suppose you could say and driving from Calais to get there would take us uh, probably around about six hours if we're taking it steady so perfectly doable um, as a journey um, heading down and you might want to stop on the way but um, again we stopped um, here we've been here once and again testament to what a good site it is that it's made it into our top five out of all the places we visited 
and the reasons we liked it were the lake was beautiful um, really big I don't know if it was man-made lake or mm. natural lake I think it was been natural yeah I don't know it was um, we have to find out about that but yeah. it was um, French really like you're probably aware they're really into their fishing lake so you could fish on the lake sure, and like um, you awesome. could um, use kayaks on the lake they even had this thing set up with cables and wires where you could do oh yeah it was I like it was like wakeboarding or something wasn't yeah. it you sort of strap yourself on and it pulls you cables through the sky and um, like a, a, a water park and uh, it looked amazing we didn't have a go I wasn't no. brave enough to have a go but it looked um, I wanted to <laughs> maybe next time yes. but it looked fantastic and looked really really cool and uh, really nice thing to have them where again we spent five nights there so plenty to do in or around the lake if that's that's your thing um, we took some fishing kit with us never been fishing before never. Um, but it was just nice to 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 go and have a go at that and um, we didn't catch anything did we no apart from a lot of bites um, that was the one downside about this time we're jumping the good thing is to get to the one negative is that being by the lake that we go an awful lot of when you're down by the lake there were a lot of mosquitoes and yeah, we we yeah. I don't I'm not susceptible I don't tend to get bitten but I got bitten a lot um, Me too. you got bitten a lot my eldest son got bitten a lot as well so that was just a negative really but um, nothing major so the other three really good things that we like there was a little railway that ran around the campsite which is great you could have a little trips on that a little steam railway um, we were right in we were right by it. our campsite our camping pitch was right by it so it wasn't a wasn't um, a distraction or noisy it's or just a bit noisy sometimes. yeah but it only went past and did a little toot of its horn and everybody would wave every on the train minutes. wasn't that often was it was it I don't think so. Maybe every, maybe three or four times on in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, so nice pitches. It was a uh, one of their sort of more foresty um, campsites. So the actual pitches themselves are with an enclosed area, and you weren't allowed to take vehicles into the campsite itself. So. Uh, we had special permission if you've pre-booked um, what the French call a camping car um, or your um, and you're using your camper van to actually sleep in you were allowed to take your vehicle onto your pitch but otherwise there were no vehicles on site so um, you'd have to plan for that and they provide trolleys for you to wheel your equipment um, to, your pitch. to your pitch from your vehicle so great location on the edge of the Loire Valley lots to see and do in the, the regional towns nearby um, and uh, really good place for cycling as well there's yeah, loads yeah loads of um, nice quiet mm. roads fairly level as well mm. so if you've got um, a range in age and ability so Harry's our youngest and obviously yeah. him being able to cycle on his smaller bike the same as my eldest son who's 17 on his mountain bike is the ability is different but because it's nice quiet roads and um, no traffic it was we could cycle safely and comfortably and enjoy the local surroundings and we saw visit found a couple of secret chateaus that yeah. we just went and visited family owned ones so we had a really really nice time there. we went on a really long Bike ride for that one. We did, I think we cycled, it was about 25 kilometres one of the rides, which yeah. was amazing that we, really? we did, yeah. And um, it was very, very hot when we were there as it well, was. it was about 35 degrees, but uh, really, still really, did it. yeah, still did it. So, um, great things, are positives, lots to do, really nice site, great facilities. They had a local market that would come to the campsite, and you know, lots of local traders uh, would come selling all sorts of local produce. Um, and the other downside, aside from the mosquitoes, was how far the site was from a supermarket. Yes. Um, the nearest supermarket was. Um, it Quite was a long bike ride, right? It was too far to cycle, yeah. and we drove by car. It was, a, it was about a twenty-minute drive, so to get to the, the biggest hypermarket, and it was worth the drive because when we got there, it was air conditioned, it was beautifully cool, and it was yeah. thirty-five degrees outside, so it was it was worth worth it. We got everything we wanted, but. If you just wanted to pop out, get some milk or get something else, then it, it was it was too far really. So again, you just have to 
plan has. So not a major downside, but just something to bear in mind. Okay, so that's number four on our list. So, moving on to... Number three. Number Okay, so next on our list, number three, three is um, Le Chateau. Yeah, really great one. So Le Chateau, although it's only at number three, it <laughs> is one of our Fave. favourites. So um, this campsite is in a very small town, again in the um, Loire Valley, yep. um, a yeah. small town called Bracio and it's very very close to some of the, the premier famous big chateaus in France really? so if that's your thing then you need to go here so um, you've got Chambord, you've got Cheverny, you've got all sorts of big name chateaus for, available for you to visit and some of these places that even if you're not interested in history are absolutely amazing and you have to have to go and see them and they're beautiful beautiful places to see clues in the name yeah so exactly the clues in the name but um, we really like the campsite because um, it's got lovely big open pitches yep. really and open. there's some pitches which are nice and sort of open some which are under trees not, um, as, big, not trees. as not as big but nice sort of pine so you can choose if you want to be in a nice sheltered location or, or farther away um, yeah, nice pool. Um, there's the campsite pool, and then next door there's um, the village or town's um, public swimming pool, which is a sort of more traditional pool. But if you want to swim lengths in a less crowded way, then you could yeah. do that, or you can just use the, the campsite um, pool itself. Um, there's a great um, uh, chocolate air. Chocolate factory. Chocolate factory. <laughs> Chocolatier, chocolate factory, right next door. Um, we've the, been on a tour around. We've there. been on a tour around there and had a look around. A guy's name's called Max Vaucher, and uh, he makes um, these really high quality chocolates. So you can go in, have a tour, see how it all works, see how it's all made. Yep. Um, obviously, buy some and taste it. Yeah. But really, really interesting. Place to go, even if you're just going to have a have a hot chocolate or a, a, a cake sweet treat at the end of a day cycling. Uh, yeah, free samples that you can go and try as well. Which is but it's that's a really um, really cool place next door. Um, there's a village market in Bracio, which is really nice. And again, I think that's two days a week. Um, three bakeries in the village, and there was one that I would frequent most. Yeah. Um, but the village itself, the campsite feels like it's part of the village. So yeah. you walk out of the campsite entrance yeah. and then you walk around about 100 yards and then you're in, you're in the town itself yeah. or the village, um, so, which is great because everything is right there. But it doesn't feel busy or that you're um, in a busy campsite affected by... Not at all. Yeah, by all these things. So some great cycle routes again, loads of uh, forest tracks um, and um, roadways to explore the routes to all the big chateaus. And I said, I cannot, if you, if you have any interest in that sort of thing at all, you've got to go because it's amazing. The, the big chateaus are just, they just blow you away. They're stunning. Everything else about the campsite was brilliant. It was brilliant. Uh, and we love it. And I think, haven't we, I think we've been there three times now. Yeah, probably. So it's quite appropriate that our third favourite campsite is the, one is the one that we visited three, three, three times. times. So, so that's really cool. Is there a downside? Is there? Is there a downside to that one? I don't really know. I don't think there is. There aren't any animals. No, geez. Le Chateau, we're going to say there are no downsides. So that's great. Really good one. Okay. So number two in our list of favourite campsites yep, is one that we discovered not last year, but the summer before. Um, and it's called Lac de Aigues Boulettes. Um, it's in the Bauge Mountains of France. Yep. Uh, which is, if you're looking at the uh, a map of France, like and there's a map here which will pop up, um, on the eastern side, about halfway down, um, there's 
some mountains, the Bosch Mountains, that precede uh, the Alps. And um, there's two or three big lakes in this area, and uh, Aigbele, Aigbele, or as we like to nickname it, Aigbeget, Aigbeget. is um, one of the lakes here. And uh, this campsite was beautiful. So you've got a fabulous, um, nice big pitches, very private pitches, they're all hedged uh, down either side and um, plenty of room front to back to get, we've got a big tent, plenty of room to get, get those in. The reasons that we liked um, Egg Belay was I guess primarily the location, it was absolutely Stunning. beautiful stunning location so the Bose mountains aren't big but compared to the mountains that you get here in the UK they are, they are. and you had a stunning um, lake in front of it. One of the really nice things about the lake is uh, there are no motor boats or um, jet skis or anything allowed to use it so there's no noise or disturbance from speed boats or water skiers or anything like that so if you want to swim in the lake, um, it's safe uh, to do so. Lots of kayakers, lots of paddle boards, and a really, really nice place to go to do that. And very clean water. And um, was it warm or cold? It was quite warm, wasn't it? Yeah, really. Yeah, we were. We were there. In it was hot when it we was were there. Really hot. And it was really nice just to go down and and enjoy the lake to to swim and relax. So nice pictures access to the lake, free access to the lake, didn't have yep. to pay, um, just pop down and uh, it was within walking distance of, of where we were staying. The, um, walk. Yeah. the facilities on the campsite itself were really good. Yep. Um, they, the site gets our vote for the best toilet block we have ever experienced at a campsite. Ever. Ever. These toilets were amazing. I mean, really when you've got good. a two teenage boys coming back after we visited the, we've arrived at the campsite and they the first thing they say to you is the toilet block is amazing you know that they're pretty good but uh, really nice really clean um, great spacious facilities and that's one of the things that we really like about the utopia yeah. sites and it's such a it, you cannot overestimate how important good facilities are when you're camping um, especially as, as a family so yeah. knowing that you've got somewhere I know that people really like their wild camping and stuff and that's fine I respect that yeah. but um, when we're away just knowing that you've got access to being able to keep keep yourself clean your stuff clean and it's it's really important and, and, it, and you know you're going to get that with Totopia so big thumbs up for that really big um, so really great facilities um, three swimming pools that they had Three. Um, including the lake. Th three plus the lake because mm. they had the one pool and then they had a little junior pool and then there was like a little sort of hot tub yeah. um, hot jacuzzi top. type pool which was really nice an inside one and two outside ones um, and then you could um, all the different things that you could normally do on a campsite there's uh, the games and things you play there the lounge it was just really nice but really really the location was the thing they say location 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 really important um, downsides is that the location meant that um, there wasn't anything really close by so if you wanted to, to go to the shop or go to bakery you had to jump in the car and travel um, it, the, the closest supermarket was about 20 minutes mm. away um, by car or by camper van uh, so it that's that was a that something was a that downside. it was a downside but it was easy to adapt to it but it was if you if you need or want to have facilities nearby you'd either have to plan and be arranged for it or be aware of it or um, accept that you've got to make a journey to go and get your bits yeah. and bobs but it's a relatively minor downside I yeah. think and the other thing that was pretty cool what was the other thing it was had two legs <gasps> it was a chicken there was a campsite chicken I always make friends with animals yeah so on the campsite there was a little chicken who came around it appeared that it may, may have had a little roost nesting place on or near our pitch because I it, made it in the nest did you it came on very regularly and would hang around and Harry enjoyed that and he was seemed to be a friendly chicken but uh, yeah so that was I held him <laughs> yeah so that was pretty cool 
So that sums up number two. Two. Okay. So we may have given it away right at the beginning of this video, but, but heading on to campsite best. number one, one. our favourite campsite of all the ones we've stayed at, which is 12, 15, 12, 15 different 15, sites 17. in total, um, is the Hutopia site in Borg San Luis. So, why do we like Borg San Luis so much? Well, um, simple really. Uh, we've been there three times. Yeah. Three times? Three times. Um, twice in summer and once in winter. We were due to go uh, for a fourth time uh, in just now, in the last two weeks, uh, for our fourth visit, but courtesy of COVID, we haven't been able to do that. Um, but it's a great summer and winter site. So in the summer, um, when we've been and camped twice, it's Borg is uh, it's not a resort, it's one of the, the towns that uh, is at the deep into the, the valleys, um, which basically is sort of the town at the, the bottom hill, um, bottom of the valley, uh, with all the ski resorts up at the top. So in the summer it's the real hub because the ski resorts are as you, obviously a lot quieter, um, but a great base for walking, yeah. cycling, exploring the stunning alpine scenery all around and um, all around. one of the things that I really really like and I, I think that I like the rest too. of the family do as well is is the mountain scenery that again we've discovered yeah. since being able to travel and explore these amazing places uh, the, the scenery around Borg San is, is stunning and um, we've visited the highest um, one of the highest roads in Europe, the Col de Isaran, which is a, an hour's drive from the campsite where we drove up to uh, 2,800 metres up, I think it was, in the van. I had some stunning views uh, across the Alps and over to, to Italy. Yeah. We've driven across the little St Bernard Pass and down the other side into Italy itself. That was, um, nice. that was a great trip. Um, we've been up to the Alpine resorts in, in the summer and explored the countryside up at the, the ski resorts and had a, a picnic up there and equally done the same in the winter or clearly when we went up skiing but from a summer camping point of view um, just on the edge of the town so great access to the facilities there's uh, three or four supermarkets in very easy access some great local bars and restaurants and uh, novelty shops and some really nice things to, to see and do in, in Borg San Luis itself as a town is, is, a, is a really nice place. Um, the lots of different things to do and around about depending on what you're interested in. So if you're into cycling, um, just be aware clearly you're in the mountains, there's a lot of hills. Yeah. So yeah. we didn't do a lot of cycling on the roads because I think it would be um, a, bit a bit dangerous for us as a younger family. But, but there was lots of routes around the town, cycle routes, um, the, the forests and, and uh, around the campsite itself. So you could certainly cycle and, and, and tour around um, safely as a family and we did that. Um, there's even, I think we found, there's like a remote control car club track. So if that's yeah. your bag, you could take your remote control car kit and have a go and enjoy that. And so it's really, that's really cool, I think. We really recommend this campsite. Yeah, so, um, but really good facilities, um, really well organised, not huge in terms of its surface area, which meant perhaps the pitches, the first year's pitch we had was big, but then the second ones we had weren't huge, but they were okay. Yeah, and I suppose the only downside is that, as it's a great campsite in a, a popular town, it gets pretty busy. So, um, if you want quiet campsites, then this is quiet as in not lots of people, this is not for you. It's not a campsite that's got a bar and pumping music and that sort of thing. So if you're, not, if you're worried about that, then don't be. So that's All that's the entertainment and bars and things just is in the town. Yeah. Um, but it, the, the, it's a busy site with lots of people staying. So just be mind, mindful of that. But at no point have we ever found that to be a problem and we've always enjoyed our visits there. Yeah. 
our winter visit when we went skiing we stayed in one of their great cabins and there's a picture here of us outside one of the cabins and we had a great time so if that's the sort of thing you're into and and want to um, stay in a, a log cabin then again it's brilliant perfect location for that and I think I'm going to do a separate video about our stay in one of those uh, coming up uh, just about because sometimes you don't want to sleep in a tent or in a van really. you just want to especially if it's spring or autumn stay in something that's a little bit warmer so I'll do another video or I will do another video on that another time but um, all in all Borg San Marie's is our number one yep definitely yeah so I think that's everything that's everything yeah so let's just recap very briefly so at number five we had Vot Villa in the Alsace region. And number four, we had Lac de Relay in uh, the Loire region. Number three, we had Le Chateau again yep. in the Loire region. Only region to get two entries. Yep. And then number two, Lac de Aigues Belette uh, in the Bauge uh, mountain region. And then at number one, our all-time favourite, is Utopia Borg San Maurice in the Alps. And who doesn't love an alpine holiday? Not me. Me too. We love it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so all fingers, fingers crossed, and as I said right at the beginning of the video, uh, we had announcements uh, last week which look, fingers crossed, that um, we're going to be able to get out and travel uh, hopefully in the next two to three months um, which is great news and we can go out and enjoy these vans and the amazing scenery amazing. that um, we've been able to explore with them so thanks very much indeed Thank for you. watching uh, our video today i hope you've enjoyed it hope you've enjoyed harry's guest second guest appearance third guest appearance yeah. and uh, remember to hit the button to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed uh, this video and any of the others and remember there's lots more video content about all of our adventures and experiences on my channel Campervan Journey. Thanks for watching.